In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to this stream service of the Holy Eucharist from the Chapel of the Resurrection at All Saints. I trust this binds you well at the beginning of a week that I hope promises a little bit more than the last in terms of weather. And it is a week which for many young people marks the official beginning of the summer holiday. And we think of them as they uh, leave uh, school, some of them for four the last time, or making transition between one school and another. And we pray especially uh, that they have a time of true rest and refreshment. And if that it maybe could be your intention for this uh, Holy Eucharist, that would be absolutely splendid. I'm still continuing to live stream these services, uh, although, of course, should you feel able to, uh, when it suits you, there are two services now available on Sunday mornings here in church at 9 o'clock, Book of Common Prayer, and 11 a.m. Uh, Common Worship, but you're very welcome, and I continue to provide these services for as long as is practical, so you can stream them and enjoy them in your own time. We say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and will come with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. For neither is there any God besides you, whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly, for your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power, and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with marvellous and with great forbearance. For you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works, you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope, because you give repentance for sins. 
This is the work of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who hear the word of the Lord and keep it. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then what do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father, let anyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and ever acceptable in my sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. At first, because it's um, years, I think, since I've mentioned it, that little phrase at the end of the Gospel reading uh, there, let anyone with ears listen. Of course, you have ears of wheat and ears of corn. Uh, it's not a pun that works in um, the Greek uh, or in the Aramaic, as far as I'm aware, but a little, uh, little thing that makes me smile every time I hear it. Uh, very neat construction in today's Gospel. You don't have the verse numbers uh, side by side with the text, but you will have the verse numbers in the heading and description of the Gospel, and you'll notice there's a little sort of gap between two portions of Scripture. And that's um, quite a useful way of teaching sometimes, because, again, perhaps if you'll pardon the pun, you sow the seed, and then you go and talk about something else, while that's just sort of gestating in the back of the mind, as it were, and then you come back to the story, and in this case with um, explanation. It's quite a well-known uh, device, a teaching device. Uh, sometimes you get too much at once, so it sort of goes in and comes out far too quickly. And uh, don't be fooled by the uh, rather sort of um, benign imagery of uh, seeds and, and fields of wavy corn. Okay, you've got the naughty little tares there, which are the work of the devil. Now, whether the devil's a creation of God or a separate entity, uh, we don't know. And, uh, Actually, there were some uh, doubts uh, so on the pun again in my mind in one of the commentaries I was reading. But don't be fooled by this sort of very bucolic, rural sort of imagery at around the time, actually, when certainly the barley has come in and uh, there'll be uh, cereal crops 
coming in later from our fields across the United Kingdom. This imagery is eschatological when it talks about the harvest. Eschatological is to do with, if you like, sort of the, the end of times. Uh, and if you don't know what eschatological means, it's not the end of the world, or it is. Another little joke there for you. So eschatology uh, is one of those big theological buzzwords about you know, what happened basically when it comes down to judgment at the end of time. So you have uh, this image here of the harvest. It's only going to be the ripe and the good and the useful. The wheat that's heavy with goodness, so heavy that it bends over and, and is differentiable from the tares, which are still rather more upright, rather less laden with goods, so they don't adopt the same attitude. But of course, while they're growing up, they are almost indistinguishable. <clears throat> I was a bit baffled at once uh, how you used to differentiate between uh, an ear of corn and flea darts, as we used to have them in the uh, in the countryside, which you just sort of stick in your school junk bag and you know, put them in, in today's pew sheet. But we're talking about eschatological imagery, and indeed Jesus later on still, and in other Gospels, talks about the threshing floor of the granary, where the chaff gets swept away, and it's the wheat, it's the good, the nourishment, the wholesome, that God takes into God's barn. So, in our day-to-day -day lives, we have uh, choices between good and bad, we exist within uh, the good and the bad, and I guess it's going to be the balance of that in us, if you like, that determines whether we make the cut, for want of a better expression, at the pearly gates. And I think we all know those opportunities that we've had and missed, and, and those that perhaps if we had a game we'd play well differently. So I don't want to burden you too much with, with theology or fear and trembling. Be happy, because when people are happy, the chances are they're being good. Look after yourself, but if you look after yourself and you're happy with where you are, then you're in a much better position to look after other people. And I think sometimes the, uh, that's, where, that's where the chat perhaps sometimes gets into our psyche, where we're sort of disgruntled with our lot, and we sort of play that out in the lives of others, making them miserable and sad. Sometimes we do it quite, quite unintentionally. So we have a choice. Are we wheat or are we tares? Is it going to be too late before we know the which we are? Thanks be to God. maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, he became incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father, through the Son, who is present with us to eternity. We pray for the Church, Christ's body here on earth, for our brothers and sisters in the Episcopal Church in the Philippines, and within the poor group communion of churches, for our brethren in the Church of Sweden and the Diocese of Skara, and closer to home, our brethren in the Diocese of Leeds. And we pray for the Bishop's leadership team 
and our bishops, David, Mark, and Mark, as they guide us through these times of extreme uncertainty and anxiety. And we pray for the work of the church even more lately in the Dean of North Manchester. Relieved as some are, but the implementation of the new deanly structure is delayed until June next year. So we can continue to enjoy one another's company and friendship and wisdom. We pray that links beyond this structure can be obtained and retained as long as possible. Let me pray for this benefice, this parish, this church of all saints we believe at this time of uncertainty and trial and transition and change. We pray God's grace on its future, that God continues to work through its present. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government, for ministers making decisions, for lawyers interpreting them and amending regulations. We pray for our Queen, thanking God for her continuing good health. We pray for Governor Blakely, for all the mayor and councillors of the City of Manchester. We pray for common sense, a sense of fraternity and fellow feeling on our streets and in our homes. We pray for those who are anxious as for their restrictions are being lifted too soon. We pray generally for a sense of self-awareness, preservation but not selfishness. We pray for all those whose businesses and livelihoods have been so badly affected by this invisible enemy, which has caused us so much reevaluation and suffering and concern. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our schools, our young people, teachers and assistants and administrators, that these weeks ahead may be different from those that have gone before. For a time of rest and refreshment. Pray for those who are able to get away to a different place. Pray especially for those for whom that is not a possibility. And we pray God give families strength to tolerate one another and to love one another and to live peacefully and with equity and equanimity. We think of our schools, All Saints, Wilfrid's, Briscoe Lane Academy, Christ the King, Co-op Academy, Broadhurst, Old and Blue Coat, Trinity High School, Northridge High School and St Ambrose College. Within the parish we pray for the residents of Chelsea Road, Christopher Street, Church Avenue, Clough Street, Clapton Walk and Clavelli Street. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing and wholeness. We just hold for a brief moment those things that are impediments to a true and translucent relationship with God at the moment. Those things we can do something about. Those things that aren't in our hands.
pray that um, they may stay strong and safe and valued. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to God for those who have gone before us in the faith of Christ, for those we love but no longer see, for all the memories we treasure today. From our Book of Remembrance, we name Roger Edgerton, Barry Wilson, Robert Wormsley, Harry Bowen, Sarah Harland, William Crompton, John Ryan, Jim Bradley, William Etchells, Bethel Etchells, and Eric Johnson. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, that their light perpetual shine upon. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace to you from God our Father who hears our cry. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, whose death brings healing. Peace from the Holy Spirit, who gives life and strength. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And as safe as we can, Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way, after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, 
And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Wilfrid, St. Anne, St. Cuthbert, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Draw near in faith and in spirit. Receive spiritually the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Okay, now I hope this finds you well, or at least better and no worse. Uh, it's a good a discipline to continue to do these services. I find them uh, very restful. I hope that you do too. And there was no glitch today with the Bluetooth device. I've got a little tiny, tiny weenie um, speaker, amazing speaker. It's about the size of a, a Battenberg cake, uh, but it's able to fill a space like this. It operates wirelessly through Bluetooth on the little tablet that's on the altar behind me. Sometimes it's a bit glitchy, but today it's worked very well. And that little motet was Behold the Tabernacle of God. Uh, to music by William Harris, who was the organist and master of the choristers at St George's Windsor. There'll be a hymn at the end as well. How exciting is that? Uh, I've had a very good week past, uh, very busy. Uh, I made my live stream debut at the cathedral, and uh, for one reason or another, I uh, didn't quite get the full brief, so I began the service uh, without my lapel mic on, thinking. As the device that I'm speaking to now, the condenser mic would pick up my rather ample voice very well. But oh no, uh, the internet sort of pretty much broke down. <laughs> Some people got really, really cross. Anyway, um, I did the evening service uh, with a lapel mic, but again, I had to move that as well. Uh, I think there are some people that are never sort of satisfied, but never mind. Uh, it's streamed all over the world. People all over the world see it. Uh, and I know it's a great source of comfort for many, many people, so I shouldn't perhaps be so mean. Now, the building is being used in the week by our charity partners at Demobi. Uh, Sharita, who is its uh, founder and um, is incredibly busy, she gets referrals all the time uh, for families uh, with children with uh, challenges uh, that are in need of assistance and delighted that we were able to assist in that. Uh, basically the, the organ room uh, to my right here which contained the pipe works and the workings of rather a fine three manual organ until 1964. That's another story. Uh, that one was completely clear of anything that uh, we, we don't need and certain things we've not used and are unlikely to use ever again. Uh, so uh, that is now uh, filling up quite nicely as a, as a, as a pantry. Uh, this isn't a notice to thieves to come and do us over again, but I'm thrilled that we're beginning to feed people uh, literally now, uh, as well as hopefully feeding people spiritually too. Uh, restrictions do remain in place. It will be some time before we're able to host any kind of social event here. Uh, and again, um, by all means, continue to watch these services. You're very, very welcome, as soon as you feel it's right for you to do so, to join us for worship on a Sunday, 9 o'clock Book of Common Prayer, uh, which, for all its worth, I quite enjoy doing. And then a common worship service at 11, uh, sadly with no uh, hymns sung or the congregational parts of the mass being sung, but there is, uh, is pre-recorded music played through the public address system at 11 o'clock. Uh, please keep up to date if you can with updates on the church near you. They're not as regular as they used to be in the deep dark days of lockdown. Uh, there is also the Facebook page as well. My contact details are there. Uh, if it's appropriate for me to do so, to stand at the end, end of your, at the other side of your garden fence for a chat, uh, please let me know. I have key key equipment. I'm happy to wear it. My personal choice for, for now is not to, uh, but as, of course as soon as it becomes mandatory I will adopt that. But uh, everybody needs, as indeed we all do, to look after ourselves, but in doing so we're looking after other people. I think that's generally the Christian gospel, isn't it? Love your neighbour as yourself. So we share God's blessing and we will sing a hymn uh, after the blessing, the kingdom of God is justice and joy and you may have discovered already that all the details are in the description box below this video. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all whom you love. 
this day and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.